Hello everyone, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you 7 transition tips you probably didn't know inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So first off, setting a standard transition. When you're in selection mode, A on the keyboard, and you right click on the border between two clips where you would want to add a transition, you normally have the option of choosing to add a 6, a 14, a 30, or a 60 frame cross dissolve effect. So if I add a 30 frame cross dissolve at 30 FPS, that is going to be a simple 1 second transition like this. And usually that's fine, cross dissolve is a good default choice, but you can actually change what you want that right click transition to be. So if we take a look at the effects window, go down to toolbox video transitions over here on the edit page, you can see that the cross dissolve has this little red strip on the left side of this transition. That means it is marked as the standard transition. So if we want to change our standard transition to a different one, we can right click on another transition like blur dissolve and do set as standard transition. So now if I go over here to another clip and I right click, it's not add a 14 frame cross dissolve, it's a blur dissolve now. So I'll add a 30 frame in there and let's go ahead and play that. And we can see that now we have that instant access way of adding the blur dissolve instead. So if you really like to use blur dissolve or another transition more than cross dissolves in your video, it might make sense to set a different one as your standard transition. Also worth noting, you can set favorites to appear in this bottom left hand corner section. So if you really like, let's say blur dissolve, you can check that to appear here. And I'll add cross dissolve as well. So that can be your kind of shortcuts area for the ones you most commonly use. Okay, tip two, if you want to preview a transition, you can left click on the border between two clips and then just hover over the transition you're thinking about adding. So let's scroll down here to fusion transitions and let's find one more interesting like a noise dissolve. So with these transitions, you can scroll from left to right in order to preview how the transition will look on the selected clips. So you can preview it from start to finish. I believe in the preview, it would standardize it to a one second transition. But of course, once you add it, you can expand it to a longer duration. But this is a great way to look at some transitions before you use it in your video and see if it's actually something that you're interested in adding to your timeline. So once again, all you need to do is scroll from left to right in order to preview the transition. So for the next tip, let's start by adding a transition onto the border between two clips. I'm going to take this drop warp we were just looking at, and I'm going to put it right here. So once you add the transition, they'll play automatically, and that can normally work just fine. And you probably already know that you can expand the duration by left clicking on it and dragging the duration around like this, expanding or contracting it. But did you know that there's also properties you can add in the inspector when you left click on a transition. So in order to edit these properties, you can either click on a clip and then choose the transition you're editing, the in or out transition, out will be on the right hand side, or you can click on the transition directly. And there will usually be some properties that you can directly edit. So this particular transition doesn't have much that you can edit right here. You can change it to be on the right side of the border, the left side, the middle, and you can expand its duration. But if we go back and we click on something more standard like a blur dissolve, you can see that you also have the option of adding ease curves. So ease in and out means it's gonna be slow at the start and the end, and it's gonna be fast in the middle to make up for that. So here's blur dissolve with the ease curve. And then here's with no easing at all, which is just gonna be a linear speed. So play that one more time, linear speed and then ease curve in and out. So you can see the difference there as it accelerates towards the middle. So tip number four, you're probably wondering why there's really no settings on the drop warp. Well, in many cases for these fusion transitions, you can actually edit the properties of those transitions on the fusion page because these fusion transitions are actually made up of a series of nodes on the fusion page. So the fusion page is where you edit effects if you don't already know. And how you jump to the edit page for a fusion transition on your timeline. First you click on the transition and then there's going to be this button to jump over to the fusion page to edit it. So if you click on that, now we can see the effect in this node group here. It might look simple, but if I pull these nodes apart and then we double click on the node group, then you're going to see a whole lot more nodes going into these fusion effects. So this is where things get a little bit complicated. But if you're willing to do a little bit of trial and error, you can go ahead and take any of these nodes here. And if you don't see anything in the inspector, just double click and then you will see the properties. You can see if it's been keyframed by the standard default effect. And you can just look at all of the settings that actually go in to making this transition. So 
if you want to preview the transition, just scroll a little bit. So here, halfway through, we can see our transition kind of occurring here. So let's go ahead and find one of the nodes where we can adjust some of the settings. So this noise node, we can play around with the scale a little bit and we can see how that's going to affect our transition. So if you look closely, uh, the noise kind of makes these little black blotches in the background. So adjusting the scale is going to have an effect on that. Let's go ahead and uh, look at this dent node and uh, double click on the title here. So we could change the type of dent for this effect and it's probably gonna dramatically change it. So you gotta be careful here. Um, remember, you can always go back to the default effect by re-adding it to the timeline, but here with a kaleidoscope dent, it'll drastically change how this effect actually looks. Kind of cool, actually. But yeah, the takeaway is that the fusion transitions can be edited on the edit page. So the next tip is that when you do edit a transition, like I just did, and you like it and you want to save it for later, you can take it and you can save it as a new preset. So you might see here um, from previous videos that I have these user transitions. So if you right click on a transition that you like and you've edited it, then you can do create transition preset. So I will call this one Kaleidoscope Drop Warp. Hopefully I'm spelling that right. And then we hit OK. And then that effect is going to pop up over here in the user created presets. So if I want to use that same effect somewhere else, uh, let's just go over here and I'll get rid of this transition that I previously added. And now I will just drag and drop the user created Kaleidoscope Drop Warp. So we go here, we hit play, and there is our edited Drop Warp effect. Tip number six, you can shrink or extend a transition by trimming on the timeline or using the selection tool. So I did kind of show that um, by default, you add a transition onto the timeline. It's usually just going to be 30 frames one second. But if you want to expand the duration really easily, you can just zoom in on your timeline over here, use the selection tool and then pull on the edges like this. It'll show you how long the new duration is. Uh, note, you can only pull this as long as you have extra buffer from the underlying clips. So at this point, it's not letting me pull anymore. So if I hit T to go to trim mode and then we left click on this border, you can see it's already pulled the uh, transition duration out to the buffer area. So if I turn off snapping and then I pull on this one way or the other, you can see that when video disappears from the timeline that it becomes the white box that kind of surrounds the left side of our transition. So the buffer I'm talking about is the extra footage we're not showing in this cut and the transition can't be longer than the buffer duration. So if I add an extra 17 frames here, then I can hit A to go to selection mode and I can expand the drop warp 17 more frames. So just keep in mind, you have to have buffer on both sides as well. So you can see the white box when I pull on the left side, the white box on the right will expand or contract and it needs to be at least as long as the duration of the transition. So just know that that's another way of easily adjusting the duration of your transitions. So if you're in T for trim mode, you can still do it. Uh, just look for this little icon you see on the cursor here in order to adjust its duration. So it's actually the exact same as in selection mode. Uh, alternatively, of course, you can edit the property in the inspector and just type in the duration you want. So if I want two seconds, just type two for two seconds and uh, that'll get you a precise amount really quickly. Okay, tip number seven, I actually just talked about it as well, kind of in the process of explaining the other one. But yeah, that clip buffer thing. In order to add a transition, the edges of your clip have to be showing green, which implies that there is buffer information from the source file that is not being shown on the timeline. So if I was to double click on the video clip and remove any in out points, so I'll do Alt X. So now there's no in, there's no out, which means if I drag the entire video clip onto the timeline like this, and I'll position it right here at the end, and I'm in selection mode. So I'll left click on the border between these two clips. Then you'll see that the right border is red. That means that we are at the start of the source footage and there is no extra buffer that is hidden from the timeline that exists in the source file. So if both sides of my clip are like that, and I'll just expand this until I hit the full duration, I need to zoom out a bit for that. So I expand this and I pour it all the way to the end of the source file like that. So let's zoom in. So usually at this point, it would be showing red on both sides. That's a little weird, actually. Uh, but let's try dragging a cross dissolve on the border here. Okay, so you'll see 
that it doesn't let me add it. And if I right click and I add the default transition, it'll say that there's insufficient handles to apply the transition. So you have to trim the clips if you want to actually add a transition. So that is the same thing as pulling in on these sides to add that buffer, the little white box. So when you have the white box as in part of the clip is not showing, then you can add your transitions. So you have to be careful about that. If you try to add a transition and nothing happens, or you try to add your standard transition and it gives you that pop up about trimming clips, it just means that there needs to be more footage to work with, which isn't actively being shown on the timeline to be used as part of your video transition. And of course, along with tip six, if you're going to be expanding the duration of your transition, just know you can only pull this out as far as there is buffer or handles that are not shown on the timeline. So when you reach the end of the footage, that is also the end of where you can have a transition at, at least on one side of the footage here. So that's pretty much it for my transition tips for DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope you all learned something from this video. So thank you for watching to the end. I have been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.